So the first thing is that no one actually needs innovation. And when people say that we do need innovation, that either mean that they have no idea what they actually want and they hide behind this nebulous term, or they have a very particular idea of what they want to introduce to their organization as a part of this innovation. They want a new product, they might want a new service, they might want a new system. So they have a clear picture in mind, but then at the end of the day, it's not about the innovation, it is about the changes. It is about the changes in people, processes, and technologies. Single most embarrassing failure that Amazon had. Like, no one really knew about the phone, it didn't work very well, it wasn't competitive in terms of price or features. Um, the, the Silk browser that they had was just horrible compared to the, the existing browsers. I mean, it was just, it was a disaster. Now, I would argue that the Fire Phone was the most important product that Amazon ever released. It was their biggest hit. It was a blockbuster hit because what came out of the development of the phone was all of these things. That's what people are looking for. So when you don't do these things and they see it on Amazon, they say, why can't I do this with with ABS. And I know you're going to go, there's no way. But remember, everyone you're selling to is also a consumer in their personal lives. So even though you're selling to a business, they're still a consumer. So the expectation follows them wherever they are. And it's because people want it to be personal. Know me, know who I am. Know I'm Tiffany Bova. Know I ordered from you six months ago. You always ask the question, is it product or service that you need to scale? What I'm telling you is that you actually need to scale both. You need to innovate and scale in your product. You need to innovate and scale in your in your service or your success. And if you have those two aligned at the same time, you have a you have a higher chance of being able to get to market, get early adoption, and get scaling in a faster manner than you would have seen in a more traditional method. This is low risk. And this is where you get quick ROI. Some of you have mentioned over the chat the term ROI, return on investment, right? So this is where I know most of the factors around me. I know the competitors. I know what they're doing. I know that if one of my competitors is now offering this feature or this option, I'm just going to optimize my product and offer something similar. But this is not where innovation happens. And this is not where significant growth happens. And this is obviously good because it's low risk. So many, many, many companies, in fact, most of the companies in the world spend most of their time on optimization. The browser that you use to apply for the job was a very powerful signal of employee quality. Okay. And so can you guess which browser has the worst employees? Internet Explorer, right? It's default one. It's default yeah, one. It's default, right? So if you apply for the job using the Internet Explorer, it, it probably means you're going to be a crappy employee, right? We run a model to identify the most predictive attributes. And then we acquire accounts that have those attributes. So for example, if we find here that the tenure of the CIO, one thing we found in this example is that during the first six months of a new CIO, you have a much higher chance of having a meeting with them and a much higher conversion rate. Once a CIO has been in their job for more than six months, they're sort of locked and loaded and they're much less open to talking to new vendors. So uh, we would append uh, that information to the data set and we would look for other accounts like that. When, when uh, investors would start uh, uh, questioning the sanity of uh, your company's leadership, like why are you building a new business if your previous, if your status quo existing business has already been doing well? Well, you would do that simply because you cannot expect everyone else to respect your status quo and respect your business. If you want to stay the leader, you have to think about disrupting your business on a kind of ongoing, continuous basis.